Hey guys, we're back. First things first is I'd like to apologize that I'm a straight white male in 2021. I'm sorry. It's my fault. Forgive me. My pronouns are he, his, and Sir Lionface. And um, I'm putting my cell phone notice. Hashtag triggered. Let's start the show. Are you ready to go into the rabbit hole? Welcome back to the episode, guys. It's episode 97, and we have a new side co-host who you can't see right now because I have the power of editing, and there's an illusion in front of him or her. Sorry to assume your gender. Thanks. Don't say <laughs> Don't talk yet. <laughs> okay, now you know it's a dude or a woman with a very masculine voice. Thanks. There we go. Now we just tricked them. Tricked it them. But anyway, guys. We are back, and it is David Quadnet, who is the new co-host. David, welcome back, brother. Oh, thanks for having me, man. This has been a long time. <laughs> it has been. How many episodes has it been since you've been on, man? 300? Uh, probably about 30. 30? Yeah, it's a fair assumption. Well, I speak for everyone when I say welcome back, brother. On behalf of all the people in my head and all the rabbit chasers, we're happy to have you back. It's been thanks. too long. It's good. I'm happy to be here. We're going to dive deep into some things and things. We'll, see, we'll see what happens. Who knows? Yeah. You want to play a game? I love games. Did I take a shower today? I think so. I yeah. didn't. Dang. I didn't, dude, bro. That's rough. And I went to work, worked all day and we were you, on a time crunch. You don't work hard enough. Yeah. I don't stink though. Huh? You don't no, smell me. Right? You, no, you smell. No, there's no scent. <laughs> I'll take it. No sense better than a scent. Right. You want to get into cheers the good news? You want to go first? Yeah, for sure. Guests go first, right? That's the way I like to do um, it, brother. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, my good news is uh, last time I was here, we, um, me and the wife bought a house, and now we're pregnant. So whoa, yeah, just knocking things out one at a time. The American dream, bro. Say, man, get a home life in debt. That's <laughs> yeah. good. Get a home, get her pregnant, start a family. Sit, rinse, repeat. Yep. So you know, besides that, and uh vaccine mandates are getting pushed back life is good yeah what's that hat you wearing there man oh dude it's uh it's not a playboy hat as many females in my life have suggested <laughs> it is a number one edition truth or theory into the rabbit hole yeah dude we don't make that hat anymore so you have that fucking vintage collection hat bro i'm an og That's check out sure. my hoodie brother oh yeah. yeah there you go we all these things are available guys let me know if you'd like a hat a t-shirt a hoodie whatever a fanny pack yeah, it's an app store right you can get you some in the app store <laughs> <laughs> now i do have a site uh where the stuff is at but yeah let me know just because the show is ending doesn't mean the merch is going anywhere guys this stuff's going to be famous forever that's right everybody's going to want to wear this vintage shit my cheers to good news is a long one let's hear it you got time it's a long one man um so you guys heard me mention on several episodes where i talked about the medication in my life that I'm on way too much medication and I hate that part of my life. And I said, you know what? I would like to get off all medication. And guess what? Your boy did it. He's off all medication now. 
Nice. I can't remember who our last guest was that we went really deep into this with. I can't remember what his name was, but I remember his face. He was an older guy with a ponytail. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I'm getting off this shit, brother. And nice. um, he was very supportive of it. Thought it would do a lot of good for me. And after years of being on all kinds of shit for my Crohn's disease, my anxiety, I'm off of all of it. I'm not doing anything Dude, else. Congrats, brother. Thank you, man. That's awesome. I'm losing weight. I'm working out good. again. You can see my my skull. It's not hidden behind a fat bowling ball anymore. Uh, things are coming around, but it is not easy. Sometimes I get some serious, serious claustrophobia, panic attacks that are like crazy that I've had two since it all I went off of. I basically took the whole month of October to wean off my medication and um, went dry in November. And November, for the most part, was just all side effects of numbness in my face, very disoriented, like that third person kind of vibe where you feel like you're out of your own body. If I looked at one thing and then turned my head and looked at another thing, my vision was like delayed. So Ooh. November was rough for that, um, but got through it. And now all that side effect stuff is mostly going and I have random panic attacks, but I'm getting to a point where I'm beating them, still not doing medication. But it is what it is. But that shit is crazy, man. Having a anxiety attack is something I always thought was a bunch of bullshit when I was younger because my mother, unfortunately, was cursed with that stuff, too, and had a lot of them when we were kids. And I used to think, like, my mom's hypochondriac. She's just overreacting. There's no way somebody can be that freaked out and having this kind of problem. But this shit is real. Sorry, Mom. I know you watched this. I don't think that way anymore. I know how it goes, and it sucks. But there's natural ways to beat it, and I'm doing it. Nice. So anybody out there you sh thinking about getting off of it, try it. Yeah, or don't try it. it. Yeah. No, but, dude, your willpower is stronger yeah. than any medicine out there. So like, that's one thing that they don't get into enough is, you know, you watch the infomercials and they have all the side effects, mm -hmm. all the side effects, which all come with their own medications after. Right. So it's, it's what? Gonna, endless pharmaceutical nightmare, man. Right. You're going to pop pills the rest of your life or support the Hell big pharma. No. You're buying someone else a house. Okay. Hell no. Yeah. Focus on yourself yeah good for you man that's awesome that is a huge win because people are stuck on those pills for life yeah and they can't function without it because the side effects of withdrawal for those is astronomical so yeah dude props that's a big deal found it we touched mics we did <laughs> <laughs> for the listeners out there yeah you guys listening like david quadnet over here he only yeah. listens to the show because he's that always worked. working and got stuff yeah. going on it, it's cool put, with that i put you in my ear and i just melt <laughs> dude that's one of the nice things yeah. anyone's ever told me appreciate that some of you guys listen uh, listen and some of you guys go on youtube and watch which is like maybe a, a fraction of the our, our audience because we get a ton of audio downloads and we get like less than 80 views on youtube <laughs> that's fair yeah youtube stuff that is we came into the game with that episode 49 when we did the big swap cast with monica brad mm. propaganda report and david wise the the kingpin of flat earth um she wanted us on that i think the ascension guys were on there as well um five i kind of want to say their names because i can't remember right now i apologize but um yeah that was our first episode on youtube and i thought I was like, Miles hesitant to get on YouTube because I was like, we're going to get canceled. I'm going to waste all the time editing this shit. They're going to cancel our show, pull it because of the stuff we talk about. But from episode 49 to which now is 97, we've only had one episode pulled from that whole library, which nice. is nice. And it was with the Union of the Unwanted. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys Sam, talk about the real stuff. <laughs> yeah, Sam Tripley's guys and all that. That was the only episode that's triggered anybody. I guess we're too small. We stand under the radar like a little helicopter flying on the, above the ground. You know, you say that, but I think that they're realizing that there's more of an entertainment space for people who listen to, you know, your whole, in quotations, conspiracy theory s people. Mm -hmm. We're more interesting. We have things to say, and we're not something that you're going to see on your nightly news. So people like to hear a different take on the realities of life so they they like people like what we have to say yeah man YouTube you enjoy doesn't it, want huh? to get rid of it yeah i do yeah. i love it that's all i listen to all you listen to is truth and theory right <sighs> that's it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and a couple other things but they're yeah. all based around the same assumption that we're all living in a bunch of bullshit and mm -hmm. there's nothing we can do about it except for express ourselves right and later on this episode, we're going to go into some of your podcast recommendations because cool. uh, David and I had 
dinner together like a romantic couple would before That's we nice. recorded tonight. And he was telling me some of the shows that he's been listening to, and they're very interesting. So I want you guys to hear him as well. Yeah. But um, first topic we're going to jump into is practicing situation awareness. Mm. It's important. It's a- it's very important. And um, as a father, especially to girls, this is a big deal to me because being a father to girls is a nightmare for me. Um, but I love those girls. I wouldn't I would do anything for them. But I had them recently. We went to a sandwich shop and we went to sit. I told them to go pick a table to sit down. I was kind of judging how they would pick a table, too, because it's interesting to watch their little brains figure things out. And uh, my oldest daughter sat where I would sit. Mm-hmm. Ideally. Yeah. yeah. And I tapped her on her shoulder. I was like, hey, go on the other side of the table. And she looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, she's like, why? I was like, I'll tell you in a minute. Just go on the other side of the table. And um, I put their backs to the to the entrance of the door and my back to the back of the store where there was nothing going on besides a fountain machine behind me. And um, she was like, why Why do I have to sit over here? I was like, it's not about where you sit. It's about where I sit. Because yeah. I'm watching the what's going on in here. And I don't want to cause unnecessary fear and anxiety for my kids. But I was telling them like, if something happens, somebody came in here with bad intentions or anything like that, I need to see what's going on ahead of time. So I have time for us to react to it and, um, and keep you guys safe without going into too much detail if you freak them out. But, um, nice. yeah, I'm a big, big, big person on where I sit in a place. I cannot sit with my back exposed. That gives me like, it freaks me out. Yeah. I have to be with somebody I really trust. I know they can hold their own or I know it's going to be paying attention for me to have my back exposed to any kind of a, public surrounding yeah and then having girls on top of that is that they need to understand the vulnerability of who they are Mm -hmm. you know no offense to them but they're not even teenagers um they can't defend themselves no and that's the reality of it yeah exactly so you know as they grow up and they look for um security in life because the world is only going to get crazier Mm -hmm. as we get older um they need to be self-aware you know not a lot of women are um right which is really sad these days they're not taught it at a young age they don't have that strong you know male figure in their life to show them it's incredible how many people are not aware of that stuff because i was as i'm doing that i'm telling them about this i look over and i see two families with uh, guys that are older than me with their wives and their kids and the the husbands are just back to the door just clueless just no. they're like their wives are like the alphas of the relationship you can tell <laughs> they were like the strap oh, on did you order my sandwich the way i wanted to oh I'm yeah. sorry did i misspeak okay i'll just eat this yeah. anyway they don't want pickles on their burger there <laughs> dude i will fuck you up um oh, that's good <laughs> <laughs> and uh these guys i can just tell like are just absolutely clueless to their surroundings what's going on like you're gonna be a victim don't be a victim yep. life is that's right gonna paint all kinds of scenarios for you and how you respond to it is everything don't put yourself in a situation where you're gonna be a victim automatically yeah don't and you know what's good about that and i don't mean to interrupt you but it's no, all please along do. the topic so you know we live out here in colorado and you know i personally work in boulder colorado so we just had that shooting in the the king super supermarket grocery store yeah, yeah. A, a few oh shoot i guess a year ago now um, but I was talking to a female coworker of mine and, you know, it was all about situational awareness, right? And mm-hmm. sometimes things like this, they kind of go off without a hitch and completely random, but it's still a situational awareness mm-hmm. where know your exits, no hiding places, no ways to fight back. And that should be any, any aspect of life. Expect the worst, but hope for the best. That is a, a motto that me and my wife go through every day because you never know when a crazy person walks in with a gun and Mm -hmm. you know these gun-free zones are supposed to keep you safe but just takes one asshole and you're all you're all screwed so solid points man yeah yes i mean that's it man that's how we live our life you know you 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 hope for the best but you expect the worst and you'll always be prepared yeah i remember as a kid i went to the grocery store with my mom a lot and um we were at our rouses i think and um this black guy stole some stuff and was running around and like the staff was chasing him. It looked like a cartoon. He was like climbing over all kinds of shit while they're trying to catch him. And then <laughs> eventually the cops got there too. I think they ended up catching him in the parking lot. I don't know if he was like mental or what, but you think if you're going to steal shit and you're like, let's leave the area, get the hell out of there <laughs> instead of running around like a Looney Tune character. And, um, but I remember just th- seeing that like this shit's everywhere. It doesn't matter where you're at, who you're with, anything can happen anytime. So just, don't put yourself in situations where you're going to be a victim. It's, um, it's something that grosses me out with mankind nowadays and men and our, 
in our time period that we live in. I guess we live in an area too that has a lot of beta bitches. Yeah, but <laughs> it's pretty sad. But yeah, and that's just it's sad thinking that somebody's dad is like that too. That's just so gross. Yeah. So if you're out there listening, be a better dad. Yeah, and shout out to that black guy that robbed that grocery store. I'm sure you're watching right now. I'm sure your life is in a better place, and you're, this is your favorite podcast. So good, good job right. turning your life around, man. Yeah. Congrats. Appreciate you. Um, yeah. <laughs> But um, one thing I had thought about recently, and I was like, I need to talk to David about this. He'll appreciate it the most because you, you and I have a weird way of looking at things mm-hmm. outside of a box and something I've always valued about our friendship. And I was thinking about, <laughs> I'm not saying I was high when I thought of this. I'm just saying I wasn't. Hmm. I wasn't high. But can you imagine trying to describe what feeling, feeling the feeling of being underwater is to somebody that's never been in water before? You know how okay. think about like you submerge in water. That's yep. its own feeling. Can you imagine trying to explain that to somebody that's never even been in water? Yeah, it's like you're being suffocated without air, but you're in the air because there's no water. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's crazy. It's like you're choking on yeah. air. You're like floating, but you're not. Yeah. Hmm. No, I, that's very odd. Um dwell on it, guys. Think I've about never it. Heard of that one. But yeah, yeah I feel you. That's um it's definitely a a feeling that you can never describe to someone unless you're, you know, choking on water. <laughs> yeah. Which I did almost a year nice. ago. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just something else I thought was like bizarre to think about and um, think about those weird things, all the different senses. Like how would you describe it to somebody else? Cause the only way you can describe it is cause you experienced it. Like how do you, it's fair. Yeah, I don't understand how you would come. It's one of those you had to be there moments. Yeah, you had to be in the water, guys. You had to be in the it's water. It's like someone without hands. And you're like, oh my god, this is so soft. <laughs> <laughs> you just had to be there. <laughs> it's rough. I'm sorry, people without hands. All right, listeners. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some more random topics that uh, I think about that I just want to talk about on the show with you. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, well, even as an adult, like it. As a FedEx guy, I drove around a lot. Shout out to P. Hud listening, and he's probably driving around his FedEx uh, Dude, vehicle right now. Some good jerky right there. Yeah, P. Hud's jerky gets um, um, <laughs> yeah, I would drive past a lot of neighborhoods, and I'd see like there's always a boy playing in his driveway shooting basketball. And as soon as he sees somebody coming, he's like, "I gotta make this shot in." You can see the the drivenness on their face change, and it's like it's not just a kid thing. You see it in adults too. Like when there's a situation where somebody could see you doing something. Like you turn up your, I got to make this look cool because somebody could see me doing something. And it's just such a funny mentality thing to think about. Like the people are like doing a little signal to me. Hey, like I'm going to make this shot. Like yeah. this guy's going to drive by in a FedEx van, but he's going to discover me and tell me I need to be in the NBA because yeah. <laughs> I made that shot. Yeah. Or pop that willy. <laughs> yeah. Or pop it's the like, willy. Oh, exactly. Shit, the neighbor's coming. You yeah. Know, pop the willy. What it, you see it so much in kids. It's like embedded in their, their genetic makeup. Like they have to do that little quick show off moment. But where the hell does that come from? And what do you what do you think you're gaining out of that moment? So that's just like a deep dive, not necessarily for attention, but like to impress. So like, mm-hmm. you know, it's you could almost say that that's like the alpha in them trying to show that I'm superior. And then every time they fail, they're that much closer to being a beta male. And it's one of those <laughs> things that, you know, you encourage the kids to do the best that they can. Um you know, I definitely did stuff like that when I was young. You know, I tried and throw the ball as far as I could. Yeah, I know. It's in all of us. I'm not yeah. saying something I didn't do because um no, dude, it's just I it's, remember like we play football in the streets. If we were doing street football, it was two hand touch or four hand touch. And if it was in somebody's yard, we'd be tackled. But if like we're in the street and there's a car coming, I'm oh, yeah, I'm dude, intercepting this shit. Yeah. I'm either gonna intercept this or I'm gonna throw the prettiest football pass dude, you've ever seen in your life. And that's human nature. Yeah, right. You know, like so like biblical times, they had men that had, you know, multiple wives and there was men out there that had no wives. You know why? Because they didn't throw the ball far. You know, the guys <laughs> that the guys that had multiple wives, they went out there and they were showing off in front of them, whether they were slanging or they were throwing balls and killing deer or getting the buffalo and bringing the meat home. Um, those are the ones that prospered. And that's the bloodlines that we all get to enjoy because they're the ones that had the 30 offspring. And yeah, there was the other guys that, that just didn't do that. They didn't have that in their blood and they had no wives. So I throw this football right over the mountains. That's right. Guess what? The ladies line up for that. <laughs> um, yeah. Thinking about that too. That's another thing I was thinking about recently. That's fascinating is the whole migrating over to North America, how the people, 
from different countries came here and like where they ended up, where they settled, who made it to the West and um, how much that influenced those cultures in those areas. But ironically, to, to make it to the West was like the hardest path on the Oregon Trail. Um, you had to go through a lot of shit, but everybody in California is a bunch of bitches now. I said it. That's the gold rush. They all made it there. They got rich. They and survived. then they moved. Yeah. Then they went to right. Gatlinburg. <laughs> Those are the Shout out to the people. Smoky Mountains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Those people weren't soft back then. Those are some, some hard people. But dude, that was a hard ass time. Nowadays, dude, those people, they won't eat a, an ounce of beef if it would save their life. Beef? You mean came from a living anima? Yeah, dude. It sacrificed its life for you. So enjoy it. Shit. I'm allergic. Nope. <laughs> False. <clears throat> Yeah, we're going to get into that, too, because you told me some shit tonight at dinner before I proposed to you and you declined. You Take said it. some. Yeah, well, I tried. You <laughs> you did. The, you told me some stuff I'm really interested in, but we're going to save that for a second. I got one more stupid story to tell you, and then we're going to jump into nice. just David Quadnet lifestyle. Oh, shit. Okay, let's do it. It's coming to you, brother. I wanted to share a funny situation. Um, I told some of my friends, so y'all may have heard the story already. So if you heard it, I apologize. But for everybody that didn't hear it. This cracked me up. It might just be me as the father, but I took my girls to an arcade place recently and they had a, uh, a VR set thing over there, a VR part of the arcade. And I was, my youngest was like freaking out. She's like, I got to do that one. I want to do that one first. I was like, now we're going to sit down towards the end. Cause that looks pretty crazy. And let's like end it with a bang. So we played all kinds of stuff. And, um, uh, actually those claw machines is I was telling them like, we're not doing the claw machine stuff. That's so rigged. And I was teaching them about how, like the claw itself is made to not have any strength. And then once it goes down, it's going to loosen up and then drop all the shit and you're just wasting your money. So I tried that and I got a handful of like candy for them and they started freaking the hell out. They're like, that is so funny. They, they, they thought it was the greatest shit ever. It's like, all right, I feel pretty cool. I'm going to try it again. The kids think I'm pretty successful with this. I so did it one. Dude, I got a Your handful time, of candy won't. on that claw thing. And <laughs> I did it. full of shit. <laughs> I did it like, I spent like 20 bucks on that machine. And it, we got like handfuls of candy every time. I was like, this is freaking crazy. Oh. They were giggling so hard. I was like, this is worth it, man. This is, it was right before Halloween too. So I was like, they can OD on sugar. That's fine. It's all coming anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Spread it out. Get them high on sugar and send back to their mama. There you go. That's a good strategy. <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a best. loser father. <laughs> Dad's a loser, kids. Yeah. I'm only good at claw machines. That's a good machine. But um, yeah, I kicked ass in that thing, and they thought it was hilarious. I was like, "Yeah, I want me to spend the rest of our money on this thing." And they're like, "Yeah, do it, do it." And I was like, "No, we're not doing that." We did it a little bit longer and did it. I was like, "All right, let's go do that VR thing." My oldest daughter didn't want to do it. She was a little freaked out by it. It was a her. King Kong uh, themed or game, so I was like, "This can't be too bad." So I set my little girl up with it. She puts on the little head thing. You sit down on this, like it's, you're basically simulating that you're in like a Jeep and a train vehicle on Kong Island. It's like a roller coaster. A roller coaster meets okay. VR. VR. Okay. Meets, so you don't, you shakes you around? Vibrates. Shakes you. Yeah. And you, okay. you feel like you're in a vehicle that's out of control because you're running from dinosaurs and all kinds of shit. Right. Um, so I didn't think anything of it. So I'm standing next to her and I can't really see what she sees because it's in the headset. And I see her like, her mannerisms, she's getting nervous. <laughs> I, started, <laughs> I started laughing and I'm like, this is going to be funny. And all of a sudden she went from like excited face to just pure fear. She started crying and ah. like terrified. She's and I, real. I pulled the, the helmet up off of her face. It's like, you okay? She's like, ah. I was like, what's the matter? <laughs> so then she, she couldn't even talk. I was like, all right, get up. Um, I put her on my lap and I, I sat down and I put the thing on to see what she was seeing. And it was like a Jeep going through all kinds of crazy stuff in the jungle and these dinosaurs all swooping down trying to attack her and um then a raptor jumped on the hood and was like biting at me and i was like how do i i don't even know how to hit him like what yeah, do you gotta you do yeah so i like suffer. i punched forward and it hit him i was like what the hell Damn. i smacked him in his face and i was like okay so i gotta use my hands to interact with these creatures she said when i finally got done with it i asked my older daughter she was like do you want to try this before it runs out and she said no i'm good like terrified because her sister just got scarred from it and I pulled the head gear off and I see a family coming in. They're like cracking up, looking at us because I'm holding my daughter crying and she's hysterical and I'm swinging in the air like a jackass. And um, I get done with it. And I was like, what happened? What did you see? That was so scary. And she said, I was in the Jeep and, <laughs> and this lady was in, in the passenger seat with me and we hit something and she fell out and she, oh, I could see yeah. her, yeah. I could see her flying off the cliff. And then a raptor jumped on, onto the vehicle and was biting at me and I couldn't do anything. I was like, 
That's freaking hilarious. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> she saw her first murder. Yeah. Okay. That's rough, man. She saw her friend on a road yeah. trip get killed by a dinosaur. Yeah. But, and that's the thing about this VR stuff is like there's you can't monitor it. You know, yeah. it's it's literally one on one. Those things can read your face and say Dude, it's All wicked, right, man. We can take advantage of this person because no one's watching. Mm-hmm. No one sees what's actually going on. Yeah. So you my know, kids aren't allowed to play VR now. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> a PSA is, you know, the metaverse is not a, what it cracks up to be. Yeah. Watch out. The parents. metaverse. Keep your kids away from it, guys. TikTok's bad enough. Stay away from that shit too. <laughs> um yeah, well, man. Nice. Where was this at? Was this a fine establishment of it was actually right next door to where we're at right now at the place called the summit where you okay. can do uh bowling, um, arcade and some other shit. I don't know. It's like hmm. a big family. Right. Kind of yeah, kind of like a Dave and Buster's type of place, but not as high class. Or... Yeah. No, I mean I don't I don't <laughs> know. Just not as not <laughs> yeah. Dave and Buster is not a high class place. We'll just, just say like say that. Chuck E. Cheese with <sighs> alcohol. Yeah. Last time we went, we described it as a place. <laughs> down south as karen crow <laughs> <laughs> that's the vibe we got so if you're from the south and you understand that shout out to everybody from yeah, karen man, crow listening sorry karen about crow. that guys but david it, we, just blasted we got a, you guys yeah, me and the wife got a good crack out of it because we're like <laughs> everyone here is from karen crow <laughs> <laughs> we are not in there okay? inside louisiana joke <laughs> yeah it is it was pretty funny we laughed and which one was this was it the um, westminster yes it okay. is. <laughs> that's yeah. the same one i went to yeah we're like karen man, crow this is not, not 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 where we hang out right i didn't know you had these feelings about karen crow man <sighs> you know i born, usually leave them for new iberia <laughs> born and raised in the south right? i got family in new iberia so oh, okay because you know. i talk some mad shit on new iberia man I don't disagree with it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. New Iberia. Family there now. <laughs> New Iberia, Generet, Kaplan. Shout yeah. out to all you guys. We love you. The South is a good place. Just it's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Okay. That is a very, yeah. very optimistic way of looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful, nice place, but I don't ever want to fucking go. <laughs> the, food, the food is good, man. It's good. Oh, yeah. You can't beat the food, man yeah that's it <laughs> and my family's there so and they're nice i like them mine is there as well man yeah, they're good people yeah they are shout Next. out to the yeah, let's move on <laughs> shout out to the quad not gonna appreciate it yeah. <laughs> oh shit all right man let's get into the fan- federal mandate stuff Ooh. going on right now yeah man that's rough Let's hear it, Ben. What's so, your what's your take on? Yeah, what's so going on? so I work uh, for a hundred percent federal federal um, federally employed company. Um, they uh, you know they passed down the mandates that Senior Biden has. Uh, uh, you know, shout out to Biden. Yeah, we know he's eating guy. Jello right now. Um, Come on, man. Fuck that guy. Whatever. It's Brandon we're talking about. No, so fuck it. Let's go, um, Brandon. Regardless. Um, so that got passed down. And then I got an email today about four o'clock, you know, our mandate to get vaccinated or loss of employment starts December 8th. And today is the seventh while we're recording. So on the seventh at four o'clock PM, I got an email saying that, you know, a federal judge has blocked uh, his mandate and they are not going to be terminating employees tomorrow. Um, it's been pushed back to the 14th. So, you know, it's one of those things that we're just getting bullied by the federal government or at least trying to. Um, so people out there who are fighting it and are not complying with something that they don't agree with, um, they hold their body to be, you know, a sacred place for them. And they do not want to, you know, be forced to take injections for the unforeseen future. Um, you know, stay strong. It's tough out there. Um, livelihoods. I mean, it's the only way to make money these days for, you know, the mm-hmm. majority of us, um, until we can sell our unvaxxed blood and semen. Yeah. Until that day. I mean, Hey, you know, it, it's tough. We don't know what to do. Just stay strong. Um, don't quit. That's the number one thing. Just never quit. Yeah. Don't throw that white flag. Nope. Hold nope. your ground. Yep. Stay strong. Stay true to who you are, your beliefs, and, um, you will prevail. That's the only thing we can say. Um, let them fire you. Okay. If they fire you, just hold tight. I wish you the best of luck. Um, well said. You know. So I'm going to go ahead and together. assume that Mr. Quadnets 
is not vaccinated. No, nah, you know, I, um, I'm open about it. Um, I've gotten COVID. Um, it was relatively mild. Where on your body did you get the COVID? It was all over. Um, I think the biggest issue I had was I had joint pain that I've never had before. Um, mainly in my knees, which I thought was really odd. Damn. Okay. Um, it's a new one. I know. Right. Um, I do have Osgood Slaughter's disease. What'd which, you call me? Yep. That's it. So Osgood Slaughter, it's like an issue where like the tendons separate from the bones when you're young. Um, which I really didn't think had any issues, but it was the only place that actually had physical pain. So it actually, the way I find it was that this virus if you wish, uh, attack the weakest point of my body. Hmm. Um, I have no other health issues. I'm That's a very healthy individual, but I only had pain in one area that I've had pain before in the past. Um, it kind of goes in hand in hand with people who are overweight, who have inflammation within their whole body. Um, their cardiovascular issues That's why the heart has a, a, a tough time with it. From what I, I find, I'm um, no medical doctor by any means, but um, you know, it was just weird. So I had the COVID and it was very mild, zero respiratory issues. Um, at first I was like, I just got the flu because <laughs> I'm not coughing. I'm not struggling to breathe. My oxygen count is very high. Um, a very low fever. 100.5 was the highest I had for the four days I had a fever. So hmm. very mild, um, got over it. Like it was no big deal back to work the next day um, running, being active. Life is the same. Uh, my wife caught it as well. Same issues, um, flu like symptoms and then we're over it. So, um, no, I don't, I have that natural immunity because that's real thing. natural immunity. Yeah. If you are going to sell that's that bullshit. in a bottle. No, well, that's the problem. Yeah. You can't sell it, but good health. You can make money off of good health. You just sell healthy products and guess what? people will buy it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah we got it uh i didn't find the need to get vaccinated for something i've already defeated relatively yeah. easily um yeah go from there i mean very simple very easy i didn't scientifically i didn't find a reason to this isn't smallpox um this isn't the black plague um we're good so we carried on we didn't feel the need to the government said we had to, but the government doesn't know what's best for me. They know what's best for their financial pockets. So, Amen, brother. Yeah, we stayed away from it. You know, the wife and I are very um, headstrong in our health and what we do to take care of ourselves. And we, uh, we found that getting that injection is not what's best for us. So we carried on with our lives and we're still alive. Believe it or not. Okay, we're still alive. We're thriving. I can't believe it. I know, right? It doesn't make sense. Know, right? it's not How did you do you it? <laughs> so. You didn't even get booster shots, man. Nope. nope. All 12 of them. Mm -mm. Oh, you didn't know there was 12? It's coming, guys. Yeah, right. Just wait. It's coming. I did see um, Israel is saying that if you don't get the third shot, then you're not vaccinated anymore. So people who've got their one and two. It's like a little jackass ready? kid like made a club and he's like, no, you didn't do this. You're not a part of my club anymore. You nope. haven't done it yet. It's it's it doesn't even make sense. Like people that are still buying the shit, I can't understand the logic behind your brain. I'm sorry. I think I think they're very scared. So you know, I'm not I'm not a very religious person, but I have a really good faith. Um, I believe in my faith, and I think people who believe in nothing, they'll fall for anything. And that are the mm -hmm. pe these people that are just terrified. They're um they're scared. They're afraid that they're gonna die. Um, because they, that's a really interesting point. I, yeah, that's the I haven't really thought life. about that. Their life is yeah. over. I know with death, my life isn't over. It's just begun. Um, I'm Dude. not saying I'm careless. I love that. That's yeah, beautiful, thanks. man. Yeah. I appreciate it. I'm not, I'm not careless. I'm healthier than 95% of the country. So, uh, take that for what it is. Um, but I also believe my body's a temple, so I'm going to take care of it. Hell you know, yeah, brother. A good life. So that's, Dude, that's a do. really good point, man. The, there is a lot of that shit on the, the side of, not not having a, a foundation and faith of any kind of way like they're all it's this is what it is and it's pure panic mode too oh yeah. they can't they can't handle the idea of losing this life because it's all they, they think is that that's the yeah. only existence it's over once they die they're just dead yeah. and that's not that's not true it's not i mean and look i'd rather be wrong 
and say this statement than to then be right and believe in something else because then you're really fucked <laughs> dude i love it man that's awesome faith has been coming up a lot on the show lately it's kind of crazy um well it's all we have these days i mean yeah. everybody says trust the science but you can't question it so what do you what are you going to believe in what are you going to trust you know I, I don't trust the science I'm not fauci you know science you know. equals Sorry, people his name but... people are polluted diluted yeah, with all kinds of corruption yeah yeah and the people that are making millions of dollars and telling you how to live your life yeah i wouldn't trust them i wouldn't listen to them right especially when one of them was on record saying that we need to decrease the population right hashtag bill gates fuck you yeah they say one in 16 people need to die yeah so if you don't want to die here's a brief message for our sponsor a true him science Hello, rabbit chasers. This is P. Hud with the Truth or Theory podcast. True Hemp Science believes the body is a temple, and given proper nutrition, our bodies, minds, and spirit will function optimally. They care about what is put in our bodies and supply only the highest quality, sustainably grown hemp products they can find, because they take pride in their products. Please go over to TrueHempScience.com for all your CBD needs. Yeah, dude. Do you listen to Steve O's podcast? <laughs> no steve has a podcast yeah this is called about? wild ride and he does it in a rv i believe or a, a van and he okay. just pulls people into his thing like people you know and he talks to him in there and Wait, lets people, go. people i know everybody you know personally Ooh, okay. no he like brings he famous, famous people yeah, in okay. and Typical. um brings him into his rv and they talk and it's really good man and all your life <laughs> <laughs> is that what it's like do they <laughs> yeah, are they like dude. Going, are they moving uh that no. should be how steve does it, dude <laughs> they go like a bmx course and they're just like in the rv hitting all the rides that's yeah. what they need to do i think they're parked Steve-o. i think he like travels around in it and he like parks at his guest areas pathetic locations he should go to a four by four road <laughs> with his guests it's steve-o man that's disappointing they're all bouncing around you know camera shaking <laughs> That's how we should it's be. actually a pretty good podcast. I like it, man. Okay. If you can get past that. Evo's voice, I don't know. A lot of people have issues with that. Yeah. I personally don't care because I love those guys. Dude, if you, man, what did he used to hit? It was like, God dang it, dude. He would take those whippets like crazy, man. That <laughs> yeah, shit will <laughs> mess you up, dude. Oh, yeah. And he's Steve-O. I mean, I'm I'm surprised done, he's And alive. dude has done everything, man. Yeah. He's sober now. I think he's sober for several years now, too. Yeah. He, he has switched his life. Around, he met a woman that he um, clicks with. Well, I think they're married or they're getting married, but he had her on a sh- show nice. not too long ago, too. And it was, it was a good, good episode. I like it. Power to pussy. Whoa. You ladies. Whoa. Y'all need to learn. Okay. I forgot to let you know you that have... this is on Christian radio. We don't say the P word. Well, you know, I'm just talking about um, the realities. Of Cats. It. <laughs> nope. No. You, you know what I, it. you know what I, um, as I'm working throughout the day, I um, do a lot of noises with my voice nice. and sound effects. That. <laughs> <laughs> you unfortunately had to share an office with me for. You mean, fortunately, wouldn't be here today. I Bring it in, brother. Right. Like you're, yeah. a good, you're a good friend. Yeah, you know, we make it. I was uh, doing lightsaber noises the other day um, by myself because that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, All right, something sounds familiar about this. And then I, I turned it into uh, a character from a popular series <laughs> and it made me laugh for a while dude i was like nice. I'm, I'm so mental i can entertain myself with the dumbest <laughs> shit dude and you know i'm so much like you it's it's ridiculous we just <laughs> we just went on vacation with uh two of my best friends their wives their kids um and of course kids come with toys so they had a little little toy helicopter it was like a little rc car whatever so of course i had to make the sound effects well yes. it didn't just stay for the helicopter and it my <laughs> wife she she will not allow it let's now. hear you let's, so hear it. let's hear it <laughs> <your helicopter. laughs> oh dude it's so great dude. <laughs> i do it all the time i pissed off everybody but the kids loved it okay? the, the best part about that helicopter <laughs> sound effect was your face <laughs> intensity man well that's the only way to make a good sound effect all right <laughs> Let's see it one more time, man. That was <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to wash this mic. Oh man, Got a little spit on it. Yeah, that's Gingy's mic. Good. We're gonna sanitize nice. it. Um, 
dude, if you're just listening to this, you're missing out. Go to the YouTube and watch yeah. that shit because David's face is priceless when the helicopter kicks on. Yeah, well, look, if you're a beatboxer and you don't make faces, then you yeah. suck. My helicopter sound effect is much more subtle than yours. Yeah. And well, very different. But let's hear. Let's hear it and let's see what you think of it. Okay. Yeah. Can you be my judge? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah. It's very mild. You know, you're just cruising. You're more like military grade, and I am like <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're like Desert Storm. Oh, and I man. am, you know, fun. a New York tour. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're that that uh, news channel helicopter yeah, flying right. in for the scoop of the story. Yeah, you have to wear headphones. Reporters are jumping out. <laughs> <laughs> We're here live. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. It's fun, man. It's all it's for the kids. That's why we do it. Yeah, you know? dude. I'm looking forward to you being the dad. It's gonna be a, a fun Thanks. era coming. Yeah, I'm excited. It's it's a good time, man. Good hmm. time. All right, here's my lightsaber turning into a character. You tell me that character. Okay. okay. Right, close my eyes. <laughs> close your eyes. I'll close mine too. It'll make it even weirder. Just don't poke me. <laughs> Let me scoot over a little bit. <laughs> okay, here we go. go ahead. <clears throat> Larry Potter. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Porter. Okay. So um, the dark Harry side. Po- <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Isn't Harry Potter in Star Wars? Am I remembering that wrong? Yeah, that's wrong. Okay. Yep. That's Frodo, right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the same actor. <laughs> yeah. Um, Gandalf. No, Gandalf. that's uh it's impressive. Um, definitely a good collab that we need. Because <laughs> what's need. the difference <laughs> between a Jedi <laughs> and a wizard? <laughs> Oh, I can tell you right now, wizards are a bunch of beta bitches that have to have twigs to twirl around and cast little spells because they don't do the physical stuff. Your Jedis can run and jump over shit and jump out of explosions and cut flips and do sword fighting and Mm. expelliarmus with a twig. They can ride a broom. (laughs) All right, you got me. That's pretty cool. Right? No. Yeah, I I, um, my kids really want to watch the whole Harry Potter series, and I um. I'm hesitant about it because I know a lot of kids get addicted to that stuff and I don't want my kids getting into the whole witchcraft shit. Yeah, I think you're better off letting them read it first. They don't um, know how to and- read. They're they're 15 and 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now they're well, actually getting pretty good at reading it, which is crazy. Yeah, and it's not a difficult read. There are some words that you can't read, but me, like personally? yeah, you as an adult, yeah. they ask dad, what's this word? And you're like, I don't know. Spelliamus. Google it. Yeah, exactly. It means um, Leviosa. Yeah, but I think it's, you know, because I grew up the exact same time frame as these books and these characters in the movies. Mm. So um I think my you read them. Uh, I read the first four AR points done for the year. Boom. That's recommended kids. So take notes. Mm. Um, but other than that, no, I didn't read anything past the fourth one. They got too big and I had a life. My stepson read them all, I think two or three times. And he's a, incredible at reading and he blasts through them. He, he enjoyed them a lot and yeah, they're good. he didn't start casting spells on us. So I feel like nope. it might be safe. I just, because yeah, I think if you read the books, you realize it's fantasy. Yeah. Um, kids have a problem these days. Whenever they visualize something, it kind of becomes their reality. Yeah. Um, hence TikTok. Hey, ladies, you don't look as good as you think you do. Okay. Oh Yeah. Um, it's and just when, because you're pretty doesn't mean you're special. Sit yeah, the fuck right? down and get a real you're job. You're still a dumb bitch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, okay. dude! The the entitlement that attractive women have in this era that we live in as humanity is insane to think about, man. Dude, like you don't even have just to be because, attractive, and they still have entitlement. No yeah, offense, well, ladies. Yeah, but I'm talking about the ones that are yourself. that are that they're yeah, obviously sure. pretty, and they like they post they an inspirational thing, and then it's like them with their cleavage hanging out and half their ass is like. Did you have to do inspirational yeah, right. or did you have to do that side of it? Just pick a side. Let's... <laughs> Am I wise? <laughs> I think I'm wise now. I got 400 likes. Yeah. I showed my nipple, but it's all good. Nobody <laughs> thinks your shit's deep. They're yeah. only looking at your ass or your cleavage. You're, you're still shallow. Get over yourself. Yeah. yeah. If you're going to go that route, just embrace it. But don't try to come at me with some inspirational shit because yeah. I don't need to see that when I'm impressed by the physical side of it. <laughs> yeah, right, I don't right. want to be inspired. Yeah. Just don't do it. It's fucking irritating. There's so much that crap on we live in a such a crazy time period right now with uh, technology and people and not the rights, but like the, the way of expressing yourself is just so disconnected from reality. 
Yeah. And um, that's why the metaverse is not good for you. Oh no, stay away stay from away the people. metaverse. Guys. You're gonna hate yourself as a person. Get yourself you're, an outdoor you're, hobby. You're gonna love your avatar, but you will hate yourself. Yeah, they made a um a Bruce Willis movie, Surrogate. I think it was called Surrogates. Hmm. Okay. That came out in um, I'd say roughly around 2010, maybe a little bit less, a little earlier. I don't know, but check that out because it's very similar to this hmm. metaverse shit. Okay. And uh, spoiler alert. If you're going to watch it, um, this is probably not a spoiler, but this is the part that always stuck out with me. So he's he's like a detective or some kind of police force kind of a guy, and he walks around with his younger version of himself that's in a walking meta metaverse avatar type person where you can kind of simulate that life. Hmm. So he's like a better version of himself, even though he's an older Bruce Willis. Okay. He's got hair. He's like a little younger, a little quicker to the draw and everything. And that's his extension of his avatar. He goes home and his wife has lost her life. Like she's completely disconnected to reality. She lives her avatar 100% all the time. And I think she had like an accident or something. She's like disfigured or something's wrong with her. She let her health go away. I can't remember how it played out, but she's got this glammed up version of herself. And that's what she lives in. That's all her life is now. And he's like disgusted by it. And like it was really interesting. It's a, it's a movie that nobody talks about, but it's definitely worth checking out. Yeah, it's before it's time. Yeah, definitely. And uh, speaking of another Bruce Willis movie, I just watched it last night. Is Looper? Um, I saw that one. That one's that one's pretty interesting too. I didn't. Um, That's where he I kills did... himself, basically. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah, and he, he's a ghost at the end of Sixth Sense as well. So we're gonna ruin all his movies right now. He dies in Armageddon, saving the world. And that's Bruce Willis. Dude, that's the future, man. <laughs> yeah. But check out that movie, Sur- Surrogates or Surrogates. Or if something. you haven't seen it by now, then it's your own <laughs> damn fault, right? Yeah, but it's very it's very fitting for what's going on in the world yeah. right now. It's kind of like the whole Black Mirror. I was just about to say Black Wally, Mirror, man. Yeah. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, we're fat and you're going to take care of us, but we'll still be happy. Yep. But it's a false happy. Come on, guys. Get Epis- it together. Episode two of Black Mirror. Is that what it was? I think so. Yeah, that one is. That's a man. That's crazy. You got to watch that shit. That's yeah, so, watch your social credit score, right? Yeah, it's so dark, man. <laughs> and we're going that way right now, too. People need to get outside, get some fresh air. You know, people, your lives. people are thinking that they're trading in their freedoms for happiness. And that's just a false advertisement, guys. Mm-hmm. You're not going to be happy with less, okay? You work hard, you earn what you make, and you're going to be happy. Yep. More so than any other way. You expect someone to bring you happiness, and that is, you're going to be upset. You will not get it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. Damn, you was it Snape Severus? You Severus that? Snape and uh, lightsaber. They're so nice. closely related in sounds. Fair. Harry Potter. <laughs> John McClane. I love your mother. <laughs> uh, Die Hard. He was the bad guy. In Die Hard. Was he really? Yeah. You don't know that shit. Do you no. not know Die Hard? Yeah, but I didn't realize it was the act. It was the yeah. Same it's actor. Alan Alan Rickman. I think is his name. He's a hell of an actor, man. He's um. He played a lot of villains and then hmm. Harry Potter, he kind of carried himself as a villain. Spoiler alert. I think he was not a villain the whole time. I think that's what my kid said, but I don't remember the movies, how they played out. He just banged Harry's mom. <laughs> Harry Potter, your mother was amazing last night. Yeah. Um, no, but yeah, he's the bad guy. And um, hmm. I think what, Hans, really? Hans is, is his name. And it's, it's and Christmas time and Die Hard is the best Christmas movie. It so is brother. We'll it be is. watching that soon. We just need some snow. Here in Colorado, we haven't had any yet. Supposed to get some this week, brother? Yeah, that's what they say. I saw some chemtrails going on this week, so <laughs> they're going to push the snow down. <laughs> yeah. yay, mother. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, today is Nako Nolan, our jujitsu brother and podcast brother's birthday today. Yeah, happy birthday. It's, uh, we're recording this on Tuesday. This episode's probably not going to come out till Friday or, yeah, probably Friday. So a few days ago, it was his birthday. Send him some love. Love that guy. He was supposed to come on recently, but we had to reschedule because something didn't work out with me and Gingy. But we were probably going to get him on the 100th episode along with a bunch of other people. Nice. He's gonna a, crowded. Oh, it's going to be real crowded, boy. Everybody's going to need to have a negative test. <laughs> yes. Make sure you're wearing your mask. And I need to see a COVID oh, negative test before you get on my podcast, even if it's through the Zooms. <sighs> Yeah, we're in some dumbass times, brother. So you and I both are podcast lovers. We listen to a lot of podcasts. You were telling me about some earlier that I never heard of that I thought were really cool. And I want you to share that with our listeners. Do you know a couple of them that you know of offhand? Yeah, um, I have my The Wise Traditions uh, podcast, which is the um, 
Oh, man. Of course, I'm drawing a blank. That's what I said at dinner. I'm like, I'm going to draw a blank. Uh, it's the Wise Traditions. It's with a, a lady called, um, she's the Holistic Hilda. Um, mm. Highly recommend. It'll give you advice on natural living, um, clean living. Um, Which you and your wife are very big on. And Yeah, we, we really work a, hard for A well that. job. A, a, yeah, we try and stay well out of the Can't 21st talk. century. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's hard too, but we try and stay out of it. Um, and that is a very good podcast to learn about health and wellness, nutrition. Um, that's not mainstream media. You know, they're not going to show you the, you know, the health pyramid or whatever the hell that's called, um, your dietetic pyramid, yeah, whatever that is. Um, they're going to show you a different route that could work for you. Um, and it's more of like our ancestral, uh, upbringing, which is what got us here. So why would we abandon it? You know, that's one of the things that, oh, we're so smart now, but we don't do the things that our ancestors did to survive in much simpler more, or more difficult times. Difficult, but yeah. things were, there's a lot less distractions and bullshit. Yes. We're down to the <laughs> fundamentals of your life. Survive. Yeah. Your life was about surviving, not yeah. about going to work or the tweets that are going. How many on. likes you got? Yeah. Like media. that's not a problem. People, you need to realize that. Yeah. So the people that, you know, okay, we don't know what our next meal is. Or it's the middle of December. Where's daddy? He hasn't yeah, been here dude. in two months. These people survived ice ages, okay? Six and us people nights. are like, oh my God, it's two degrees warmer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I literally over. had to put a scarf on to get in my yeah. car this morning. That's so crazy. So it's, uh, I think it's a good podcast. Uh, these people are really great. Uh, you got to keep an open mind. They have a lot of guests. Um, you'll hear some things that you may not agree with, and that's totally fine. But um, it's one of those things that... Um, it'll help you open your mind. And that's what's important these days because there's so many closed-minded people. Um, we'll never grow. we will never adapt. We're just going to die off. Or at least those people will. So don't be one of those people. Keep your mind open. Don't be a victim. Yeah, that's it. And you told me your wife's, one of your wife's favorite podcasts made me really excited to hear this. Let's give them a shout out. Oh, dude, yeah. Monica and Brad, the Propaganda Report. We listen to you guys every day. Uh, I got my wife on it and she's she tries to stay away from... Then, you know, the political news stuff, which you guys are not, which is so great. You give us a, a relatively unbiased opinion on what's going on. Help us see through the bullshit. Um, yeah, we may not always agree with you guys, but you guys are always great. So it's awesome. Yeah. Love you guys. I love hearing that more of my people in my little circle, too, are enjoying that show because that show is uh, such a strong fundamental for, to have, in, I think, in a regular day life. Get away from all the news that's on TV. Just go listen to those guys. They give you the lowdown on what's going on without all the bullshit. That's right. And they yeah, do a great good. job doing it. Yep. That's the first podcast I listen to every single day. Beautiful. Yeah. Sorry. TOT. No, fans. that's all right, man. I don't like the show either. That's why I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> it's not that I don't like it. It's just not. You're not Monica, dude. <laughs> I'll never be Monica. Yeah. There can only be one Monica <laughs> right. and only one Brad. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, I love those guys. I talk to you, Monica, regularly. I don't talk to Brad that much, or if not ever. I don't know. I never even thought about that. But yeah, Monica is like a, a mentor in a lot of ways to me and mm -hmm. has always been a, a really, really good ally to have. Yeah. Me I'm and, very grateful for her friendship. Me and the wife, we talk about our days and you know what's going on in life uh, at the dinner table. That is like a fundamental health that we do. Um, and we, we say Monica's name as if she is someone in our life that we That's both talk to. We're like, yeah, did you hear what Monica said today? <laughs> and we both know happy. exactly what we're talking, what we're talking about. And, you know, we go over what they said on the podcast. Cause it's, it's just, it's really good. Um, it's not, I'm not gonna say it's surprisingly great, but, um, um, it's just great. <laughs> So it's fun. And I mean, you yeah. haven't had a chance to talk to Monica on here yet, right? When you've been on the show a few times? No, I haven't. Yeah, I've heard you guys talk together, and I've actually heard her reference you on her show um, a couple of times. But you know, I, I'm a really big maybe, deal in her life. Yeah, she, maybe we'll uh, be able to collaborate. I can say hello, let her know that she's my crush. I thought she was a blonde for the longest time. Really? I did, yeah. I don't Google people because that's weird. But then I Googled her, and I was like, huh, okay. So you pictured her as a blonde? I did. I don't know why. Which is funny because I have to find her. I told you this when early on when we were first uh, so we're talking to that her voice reminded me so much of Amy Poehler, the comedic actress, and she's blonde. Hmm. But if you okay. close your eyes and listen to Monica, they sound very similar. Amy Poehler okay. and uh, Monica Perez. Yeah, maybe so. But um, 
yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, I'm sure Monica will see this because she's a loyal watcher. She doesn't miss one of our shows. Yeah, some she goes on men like us, right? She goes on YouTube <laughs> to watch it, and then when she's done watching, she's like, "I'm gonna go listen to it too, so I can get a non-visual bias nice. take on it." Yeah, it makes me laugh because they always talk about how their Patreon is like all good-looking people. I'm like, well, dude, that's us, man. Yeah. <laughs> Granted, I'm only a Patreon for one one. My heart is set in one spot, and it's the TOT. Yeah. Okay, speaking guys. of. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of tell your story about your wife on your patreon charge <laughs> on your account <laughs> yeah dude it's pretty great man so we do our finances we live out here in colorado where shit ain't cheap and you know we're just average people we're from louisiana so we're technically poor um so we go through our finances together and of course she's rolling through my credit card and she's like you have a four dollar fee to a patreon <laughs> So she didn't know what it was. She thought it was Who's some only fans. Yeah. Exist. Only fans. Show. I'm like, no, dude, that's for Mr. E. Willie and JP. You know, I got to support my people. So we got a good kick out of it. He laughed. I laughed. It was, yeah, was, was kind of scary for a moment. But, uh, <laughs> I love it, it was just, it was a good time. Yep. So, support your show. guys. Yeah, support it. the podcast. Yeah. Look, these people, they do this for fun. You yeah. want your hobbies to become your living. And that's the only way they can do this with their fans. So support. Yeah, we're freezing it after 100 episodes, and I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to go about keeping the library of the of the episodes up because I pay a membership with Buzzsprout to keep our um, library, and I'm not sure how to do that without having to pay for it. And I don't want to keep paying for it when there's no money coming in on it and it's just sitting there. So I'm trying to think of a way to do that. Um, I may go back through, which is risky, and put it all on YouTube, but I don't have a lot of the videos for a lot of those interviews still. I'm not sure. But uh, I'm trying to figure out how to go about that. Okay. I'm basically just going to have Truth or Theory frozen for right now. And we'll come back to it when it's time. When JP's ready. Are you ready? Tell me what you said earlier to it. Crack me up, man. When I first told you that <laughs> uh, we're going to be doing a podcast. Oh, well, the backstory is that me and Mr. Willie, we've been knowing each other for, oh, man, since like 2012. Yeah, almost 10 years now. Yeah, we've been knowing each other for a long time. Uh, we used to share an office uh, whenever we worked together down south and then we split ways for a few years and then we came back together like two lovers um love will find a way that's it man uh so he told me that i was starting a podcast with some other guy i was like you little dick what a dude. slut like <laughs> after all we've been through you know? <laughs> so i was a little i was a little upset about it a little butt hurt but you know it's all good and i never knew that man and i, I would have uh, never known that yeah no I, so told I, me to, that. I confessed him today i cried a little bit and yeah it man. was all good so uh no i'm just happy to be you know part of a part of it you know i'm not your part name of it's not on the title but it's all good. whoa <laughs> well yeah. sensitivity there i, mean, I know man. one woman hug, comes man. in here and she gets her name on there <laughs> right <laughs> yeah Gingy's coming back i know a lot of you people are probably wondering what the hell happened to Gingy. she was on and then disappeared but it's a complicated situation but she's menstruating okay <laughs> she's having the longest period of her life it happens but she's going to be coming back and our show that we we're going to do that's different still gonna happen um and that'll be some time next year where we kick that off there's a lot of funny shit coming with that but um going back to the podcast recommendations it got yeah. you into learning more about yeah i got one more you got another um, podcast recommendation yeah okay. yeah it's the fundamental health with uh okay. paul saladino he's a he's a medical doctor um he's really i guess he's kind of big on instagram um he's very technical uh, he is an MD, so he will start to go into things on his podcast that will lose the layman. Um, but I highly recommend trying to follow what he says. And uh, he lives by like a carnivore code for the most part, which got me and the wife on a um, uh, an organ type of diet. So we, the wife and I, would take we or we take organ supplements and we eat organs in our diet, which is super beneficial nutrient dense foods. Um, you know, you hear the higher ups these days talking about how global warming is caused by cow farts and they want people to lessen their intake on beef and go to plants. But, um, my PSA for not being a doctor is, you know, obviously we don't, we shouldn't do that. Um, soy, lowers the testosterone in men significantly really so yeah it does so it, it, we're eventually just going to be a land of beta so is that where the soy boy term comes from that's it yep soy boy makes you soft. didn't know that 
Yep. So don't drink your soy milk. Don't eat soybeans all the time. You know, this, this, be, this, this beyond, restaurant. Yeah, this beyond meat is very soy based. Um, there's no real. Are we being programmed to, to be bitches? Basically, yep, that's it. They want us to be soft. They want us and to be gay like the frogs. I, yeah, they don't. They don't want us to create. Kidding, guys. I'm kidding. They don't want us to create men that fight back. That's it. We want Damn, bro. Work. That's yep. well said. That's they it, don't want bro. men to fight back. There's an agenda. Okay. <laughs> that's that's, and that's, fucking, you that's the it, hard bro. part on it, man, is that, you know, you eat beef. It makes you strong. It makes you powerful. It gives you that drive to be a better person, whether it's lifting weights, exercising, you know, being wealthy and striving for that. That still makes you an alpha. And they're doing things now to cut that at the tie so you cut off the food source and everybody starves so you give a shit food guess what we're just gonna turn into shit so that goes careful. with the pharmaceutical stuff too man the more i've gotten off this shit and the more i'm me nice. the real you, me i that's feel power. i feel like uh there's like stuff that's in that was in me that's not there no more that was kind of doing that too like i'm not saying i have a vagina on my back but i did start to grow something that's feminine related on my back <laughs> Yeah, see? And eventually that thing would have taken over your whole body. Yeah, I'd have been a vagina back boy. You would have been just reliant on your medication to survive. Which is, what's the purpose of that kind of existence? There's none. There is none. And me for a reason. Yeah, what are you doing that's greater for for everyone? Probably nothing. You know, you're just suffering with Existing. Yep. Floating through life. Yep, so... Um, I, I like this, uh, fundamental health podcast. He doesn't get into stuff like that. That's me on my conspiracy train. Um, but I highly recommend it. He has his own and I'm not getting paid for this. Um, it would be a, a really awesome thing to work for a company like that. And I'm speaking to you there, Paul. Um, shout uh, out. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, he's based out of Austin. He gets his, uh, let's see, he gets the supplements from like New Zealand. So it's grass, uh, raised grass finished. Um, no, you know, biotics, antibiotics stuff for his cattle that they use to make these supplements. It's called heart and soil. Um, God, free advertisement, but it's really good. Yeah. I'm so, going to need a, a little cut on that sponsorship there, Mr. Paul. Yeah. We'll get there. Yeah, hopefully we can all get there soon enough. Please yeah. send us a t-shirt. Damn it. Yeah, he's on, you know, Spotify. He has a good little, um, uh, email that he sends out what's that called when they send out like an emails? email chain yeah something like that i, I can't friends list I can't think of the name of right Pen now pal? yeah something like that but anyway he sends out good stuff uh i recommend his supplements um there's a lot of good ones out there um but i definitely recommend people in uh incorporating these uh beef supplements the organs uh ditch your lab made vitamin c vitamin d's um they're not going to cut it for you they're all processed they're not they're not real uh you need the real stuff so you know me and the wife we actually started taking you know certain types of organ supplements to help us procreate and you know i was taking testicles and she was taking um, you were taking testicles? Yeah, it was like were you tes- taking the testicles, penis as well. Yeah, no, just the testicles. That's where it, the penis is just a muscle. It doesn't generate anything. You were substance. consuming this stuff? Yes, it, it's in a from form. the buttocks. They're, or- so they're desiccated. <laughs> they're desiccated <laughs> pills. So it's uh, I want to say freeze dried, ground up, put into wow. a capsule. That stuff's crazy, man. Yeah, dude, it's highly good. It, it, it raises your T. You don't have to have low T to take it. Uh, who doesn't want a natural boost of testosterone? That's we should have shaved. We should have. We should have saved your cheers to good news and just use this as all a big build up. <laughs> just a big build up oh, for your cheers good. to good news. <laughs> well, I, I don't take those anymore because I'm not trying to procreate anymore. Yeah, because the you wife did. is pregnant. Yeah, you got her pregnant. Yep. So <clears> she was taking like I want to say there's like um, I don't know uterus in there and a couple other female hormones from a cattle. Um, from a cow and i was taking the bull supplements and you know we got pregnant within like the first month of trying so it was like super i mean me and the wife been together for 10 years so um with no Lots accidents of practice. yeah no accidents no close calls and then we started taking this stuff and actually trying and pretty instantaneously so you that's know, crazy man it's we are uh, fascinating yeah and we've been taking organs beforehand but we weren't taking the specific ones to help you within your own regions um so yeah, man, I recommend that to a lot of people. It's all about your own health, uh, especially this time um, that we're all in with these crazy times where they say it's it's easier to get a shot than it is to lose weight. So remember that, people. 
And now we're on year two, where in these last two years, you could have lost all the weight and never needed a shot. Mm -hmm. So remember that, okay? They, they sell you on the short term. In the long term, it's not so long. So literally gave people free donuts <laughs> with Dunkin' yeah. Donuts. And you get know, get your vax, get a donut. Me and the wife were Collect contemplating it at the beginning because, you know, we, we're science based people. We're not anti vaxxers. You know, we're not against, you know, everything that the mainstream media says mm -hmm. per se. But then the day that they said that they were giving free donuts and the government was supporting that kind of actions was the day that we lost. We said, nope, this is not for us. We'll never do it mm -hmm. because it's not about health at that point. That's right. about getting people to comply with what you said. Well, everything going on with Joe Rogan is a prime example of this, not about health. Like if it was about health, they would have helped yeah, share dude. his information and not mocked it. And yep. uh, it's the whole situation is just fucking obviously wrong well i mean could you imagine giving the incentives of you know a hundred dollars if you lose 10 pounds yeah it's, that's, that's, that's it. exactly that's, it man okay so you go in and you you weigh in and and then two weeks later you weigh in again instead of getting your shots um, and if donut. you lose you lose 10 pounds within those two weeks you get 100 bucks and then you come back another two weeks you get another that's a really bucks. good idea to get a healthier country man i mean come on man it's not that hard but then so many people lose money all these big, big companies, you know, your big pharma, your fast food chains, you know, your scientists that are creating meat in the labs. Stuffing in and stuffing it. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's trash. It's garbage. Was it like New York's, I want to say mayor, but I don't think he was the mayor who's like, yeah, you get a free cheeseburger and fries or something. If you get your, you know, your vaccine, it's like, dude, get out of here, man. You're not preaching health. You're just preaching compliance force. Yeah. So, and you sheep are eating it up. Meh. Yeah, that's sad. All right, but everybody listening is not sheep. We got a bunch of wolves out there. Yeah. Listen, yeah, we're in the woke wolf pack. Whoa. Um, since Gingy's not here, she did share a couple of topics that she would have shared if she was able to make it. So, in honor of Gingy, I'm going to share those topics. I'm going to brutally make this a disaster and shatter all the information just to irritate her a little bit since she didn't show up. So I'm going to do my best to relay these topics to you guys without any research. So she said in this link, there's a transgender swimmer sparks outrage by shattering women's records. Yikes. <laughs> Dude, transgender stuff in MMA is so bad right now too. With these dudes fighting women basically with the, a whole yeah. different bone you just, structure. You can't, you can't do it. Yes. And what dude wants to do that? You got to have some serious mental problems if you want to beat women that bad. That's um, right. So how bad? How 22 does it, does year show, old. Does it show the. Uh, does it show the uh, the times of like the old record? Uh, I don't know. I never looked at this link. So I'm looking at it with you guys on there. Um, let's see. Yeah, we just what was it the last Olympics. You know, we can all go over the fact that there was that transgender, you know, man, um, oof, see, I don't even know how to say it without being offensive. Transgender into a female was weightlifting with other females and um, didn't do so great. So why even allow it? That's what I just, I don't understand. Yeah. You know, the whole, what's the point is this, this person actually competed professionally as a man um, five, six, eight years ago. And then came back into the females. Um, we should just have their own category. I mean, yeah, be that's, yourself. That's fine. Just make a new bracket. Yeah. You want to read this article onto the podcast? Ooh, no, I'm not that good at reading. <laughs> I totally would make Jen read it if she was here. But yeah, um, actually, I will. I will share the link to you guys so y'all can research it. But now you know the the bullet yeah. point. But still, we don't. We don't want to give Jinji too much. Listen, at what, for point, not being here. Yeah, as, at what point does it become, you know, your trans rights whenever you take away women's rights? So, you know, we'll let the trans people decide, you know, what's more important, you know, the, the rights of people to, you know, change their sex as opposed to the, the fight women had to go to to get their own rights. Because we're just taking away from them. We're not giving to others we're taking away mm -hmm. so people need to realize that that the women's sports that they're more important than the trans sports because the women fought so hard for what they have today and we're just going to take it away and give it to men 
I mean, that's the end of it. Yeah. A lot of these that's women very have interesting penises. perspective on it. Yeah. You know, a woman with a penis gets more rights than a woman with a vagina. And yeah. that is not that's not fair. That's not right. The whole Caitlyn Jenner thing is a good example of that situation. Joe Rogan made a joke about it too, that um, she went from Bruce Jenner to Caitlyn Jenner. And then that year they gave her woman yeah, of the year. Right. She there was a woman her. who deserved that. Yeah. A, a woman that's been yeah. a woman her whole life and done woman struggles. Yeah. Cause Caitlyn Jenner has a medal, yeah. <laughs> an Olympic medal for the fastest man in the world. <laughs> Dude, it's so bizarre. It's... Yeah. Fastest man and the best woman ever. Okay. One person. We literally Sad. started living in a South Park episodes, man. <laughs> Everything's yeah. just flipped. The other topic <laughs> that she brought up, uh, she being Gingy, is that e- Elon Musk has, uh, coming out with a new phone which that's kind of exciting for me for the fact that it would be in america because we don't have any american smartphones yeah Um, it's not american though it's african well he lives in america and it would be produced in america okay so we'll make it it'll be made in house i think it that's the plan is to have it made in the u.s because that's my thing on elon he's not american he's an african-american yeah but but he's been living here now though right that's fair yeah he settled down i think he's is he in texas now yeah, he's he's in Austin. Or, oh, okay. No, he's outside of Austin actually. Yeah. But still, no, I understand what you're saying. But that's my biggest joke on him is that he's actually an African American. Yeah. Um, I just want some more American made shit, brother. We got too much stuff sure. in China and everything else. No, that's fair. I definitely check your labels. If it's from China, don't buy it. Yeah. Check the bottom of your foot too. And if it says made in China, <laughs> check yourself. Yeah. Get your life together. You seriously got issues. Um, so it's gonna be a US, yeah, USA made. Solar panels built into the back of the phone for charging, internet connection anywhere using satellite, the ability to mine his cryptocurrency, Mars coin. He also talked about the Neuralink thing that could be implanted in your brain so you just think something and your phone responds. Shoot me in the Skynet brain. Yeah, right. Terminator is coming. Nope. See, we don't want that, people. I don't got to have that. a balance, man. Just because yeah. we have American phones, man, just make a damn American phone and don't make it Skynet, please. Yeah. And I'm with you, dude. I do like Elon. I think he's great. But at the same time, I don't want a neural link inside my head. Um, yeah, I'm good being a human. I don't yeah. need to be a cyborg. Because pretty soon those thoughts are not yours. They're implemented. Yeah. Someone else. <laughs> yeah, right. Like you said, put a bullet in my head. I, I need to get that. vaccinated now. <laughs> It is time. For what your has mandatory. taken me so long? I am such a fool. Yeah, dude. It's crazy. Um, yeah, dude. Big tech, whenever tech becomes too strong, it's yeah. not good. You got to stop them. Mm-hmm. Get down now. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go to six questions for the second time, even though you've probably been on the show five times. We never got around to hitting your second time questions. That's good. Let's do it. We're going to do that up next. okay ready yes and we're back welcome welcome episode 97 six questions with david quadnet what up number one okay if you could time travel one time there and back which time period would you choose uh i think i would go into like the ice age time period well, I don't think anybody's ever said that. Yeah, thanks, man. Why Ice Age? Because so living out here in Colorado, you know, me and the wife would go to Moab quite often. So everything there was made from water flow, ice, um, icebergs. Um, and I just want I would like to see how it was overwhelmingly covered in water or covered in ice. Um, mm. there's a bunch of dry lakes out here that was eventually part of the ocean. Um, mm-hmm. I like to see it uh, uh, firsthand because all we can do is read about it. Um, we actually went camping one time in, I want to say like Palo Duro, which is like Northwest Texas. So it is like just South of Amarillo. And they had a sign out there that said, this used to be the coastline for the Gulf of Mexico. What? So that means like Houston, Dallas, all that That's was wild, underwater man. at one point. So it had to have been during the ice age, whenever, you know, I guess water levels were high, ice was everywhere. Um, you know, it's just one of those things. I want to see how it carved all these valleys. And um, I don't know, it's just, it amazes me just to look up at it and be like, so this was carved by water. It's cool. That is cool. One of my buddies is uh, big into fossil hunting right now. Nice. 
And uh, he found a rock the other day in a really dry area, high elevation, mm-hmm. full of fossilized uh, mussels and clams all over it. Nice. Like, that's yeah. so crazy like, to think that, that was, that was all underwater. Yeah, alive, you know, yeah. flourishing. Definitely. So I would like to go back and see that firsthand. There are a few glaciers out here that are, you know, definitely further north um that you can kind of see where you know valleys and canyons will be formed Mm -hmm. um but they're all covered in ice and and snow right now so would you get a woolly mammoth um i mean of course i need the fur yes they want are you you gonna kill it or are you gonna cut with it that's the good no i would uh, tame it and i would ride that bitch everywhere you can't tame mother nature oh i could tame anything nope with nipples (laughs) yeah okay (laughs) number two number two What's an unusual pet peeve of yours? Dude. So some people may hate me for this, but it's been a pet peeve for many, many years. But it's these don't I thought you're gonna say your racist thing. I'm oh, kidding. No, Come <laughs> I'm on, jo- man. totally joking. Don't put that on me. <laughs> I'm totally joking. <laughs> no, not you're racist. the most um, non-racist person yeah. I've ever met in my life. Thank you. Uh freaking mouth breeders, man. Mouth, mouth breathers, breathers, dude. Oh my god. I cannot stand people who are just sitting down just <sighs> mouth wide open oh, oh i dude, never realized how much i hate that too but it is so disgusting fucking drives dude. me insane like y- your nose filtrates air for you <laughs> you know you don't i used to give my stepson a hard time about that he just i'd see him and just randomly not doing anything or do, just doing something with his mouth wide mm-hmm. open i'm like no nope. shut your fucking dude. mouth <laughs> it's so unhealthy to begin with and 99 yeah. of people that are mouth breathers are just disgraced to humans um damn I know I hate them. I know there are some people out there that have nasal issues that are in shape, um, but they and just, it is, there's the retards too. So we got yeah. I mean, and I'm guys. not I'm not hating on those guys because it's not their fault, but right. it's the people that choose the wrong choice time and time again to where they're just like struggling for air. So they're <laughs> literally sucking wind after walking <laughs> to the mailbox. You yeah. know, they just they gross me out, man. I can't stand it. Their breath always stinks, and you're gross. So use your nose and lose some weight. Okay. I like it. I Done. love your ruthless, so anti-healthy lifestyle judgments. Yeah, well, it, and this pandemic has really pissed me off too because they're not telling these obese people that right. they're the problem. Mm. But obese people, you are. Yeah, you sent me something the other day at Crack Nail with this really overweight, oh, disgusting like, lady. Yeah, saying, it was like this fat ass lady. No offense to fat ass people, <laughs> um, <laughs> but she had her mask on and she's like, "I only hang out with vax because they're healthy, yeah. and being vaccinated makes you healthy, and that is a lie. You're unhealthy, delusional. Yeah, your vaccine, your vaccination. I'm big make and you beautiful. You don't judge me. No, you're unhealthy." You can be beautiful and unhealthy, but you're still unhealthy. Yep. So we're not going to say that's tighten up. Yeah. Watch Wally and you tell me if that's beautiful. Okay. Watch what? Wally. What's that? Dude, the old Disney movie? Wally. It's all the fat that people that are just moving around by robots. You need to watch it because it's great. Are you serious? I've never oh, even dude. heard of that. They're you moving need... around by robots. You girls never watch that? They may have, but I don't, I've never mm. heard of that one. You need to pay attention. Yeah. That's a, um, a schmettable night. <laughs> and watch that movie all right it's gonna it's gonna hurt how true it's becoming okay i'm interested fat and stupid is it's how called wally yep like w-o-l-l-y or A. w-a-l-l-y w-a-l-l-e okay wally yeah it's disney might be my cousin e willie okay. wally yeah exactly it's disney so there's propaganda behind it but it's more right foretelling into the future Okay. It's a black mirror for kids. Mm-hmm. It is. That's Pixar wise. It's fair. Okay. Here we go. Number three. When you were a kid, what did you want to become as an adult? Oh, man. See, whenever I was a kid, I was so, you know, absorbed into sports and, and outdoor stuff that, um, you know, I didn't really know what I wanted to be. I always wanted to like own a business. I was like, I wanted to wear a suit and tie to work every day. Um, so, yeah, I guess that I just wanted to be like a, a titan of industry. A boss. That? Yeah, that's it. But One. I wanted to be like a pro sports guy. Okay. Too. Like what sport? Um, or just like a broadcaster? No, like football and baseball. Yeah, I was, the I, athlete? Was, I was good when I was young. And then I stopped growing. So I was still good. Just I remember short. we played football a few times, and you're pretty damn good. Yeah, dude. I don't think I've ever played baseball with you because I hate baseball. I played some college I'll, ball. I'll take your word for it. Yeah, you know. I don't think you can find a guy who's worse at baseball than I am. Yeah. That's um 
It's not my thing. Just coordination's not there. <laughs> Shut up, brother. It's not for me, man. I'm pretty good at football for That's being fair. what I am. Yeah, you can just be big and be good. Shut up. I'm not All big. Right, cool. I'm big boned. He lost some weight. He looks good. I do look good. You guys should I see saw you naked. trying to look at my dick. <laughs> His OnlyFans is on sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on sale. Christmas special, guys. That's right. All right, number four. If you were going to be stranded on an island but have the chance to bring one item with you, which item would you choose? Uh, I guess I'd just go with like a machete, you know, something. Very solid choice. Yeah, just a tool that I can make other tools with. Um, a nice piece of steel. Um, it'll help me generate fire, build other tools, build a shelter. Um, I'm an Eagle Scout, so like. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I don't need a lot. I was never. Were you really an Eagle Scout? Hell yeah, dude. And I'm proud of it, okay? Dude, what's uh, with you Eagle Scouts and how proud y'all are of that shit? That's. It's, <laughs> <laughs> and look, I'll be honest with you. I hated it whenever I was doing it. Like none of my friends were into it. I was playing sports while I was in high school. But one of the things that makes being an Eagle Scout difficult is you have until your 18th birthday. It's not a calendar year type of situation. Each person is based off of their age. So if you were born, you know, let's say in September and you're the oldest senior in your class in high school, right? Mm -hmm. You have until your 18th birthday to complete it. But someone who was born in April, the same year or the following year. So you're in the same school grade. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying. Yeah. So they have more, out of them time. more time, if that makes sense during the school year, because everything goes on the school year calendar, right? There's only so many like summer camps that you can go to, to where you can get certain like merit badges and everything. So to me, I didn't appreciate it until I was an adult. You know, I, I didn't like it. I, I played sports when I was growing up, but getting that accomplishment and realize how few people actually complete it. Um, you know, it's something that I'll have for the rest of my life. I can say I did it and you didn't, um, you know, and I, I'm a survivor. I can go out in the wilderness and, you know, it's my love for outdoors. That is just part of who I am now. And I've accomplished things within it, um, which a lot of people are like, Oh, I love camping, you know? And it's like, that's great. You just go camping, you know, mm. and, and they never really learned a trait on how to survive. Um, I they, respect that. Yeah. So they have a fire starter for every fire they start, you know, it's like, all right, well, that's different than, you know, chopping up wood making your flint and then rubbing two sticks together. You know, if you've never done it, then you, you can't say you can do it. But all right. I like I can, it. Now you saw I can me say on it, I can do it. I always made <laughs> fun know? of the Girl Scouts. I mean, Eagle Scouts, but yeah, I, um... for sure. I mean, listen, I didn't like it because none of my friends ran it. Mm -hmm. And most of my friends are aligned with who I am with it's being, you know, sporty, you know, fit, doing a lot of things. And a lot of these kids were just, just fucking nerds. <laughs> yeah. And I mean that in a very nice way. Okay. Can these kids are smart. You, let's address smart. the elephant in the room. Yeah. But whenever we go backpacking and we have to do 20 miles in a day, guess what? Those kids couldn't do it, but I could. Those kids are a bunch of bitches. Yeah. They still got their Eagle Scout though. Cause they were book smart. It's terrible. Oh. But anyway, on to the next one. All right, let me address the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Were you inappropriately touched during Dude, these scouts? I wasn't, bro. I could probably beat up half the dads, okay? <laughs> so it was dads that did it? It had to be, yeah, because there's no women allowed. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Which, look, we can go into some deep conspiracies with that because it's also a religious-based organization, so priests were involved, too. So, oh, yeah, dude, it goes deep, man. It's this whole pedophilia ring, dude, just Lane Maxwell. Yeah, get ready, man. There's... I never Some heard of her. Crazy shit. They don't talk about her in the news. Yeah, they, they don't, huh? <laughs> Who would have thought, huh? The highest crime ever committed by the wealthiest people. No one that could be a situation it. that could take down so much corrupted big name people, too. And I don't know if it's going to play out that way, but uh, it should be the end of our government. Should yeah. be. Should be. I mean, dude, you got the Clintons. It's like <laughs> if you want to say that Trump was involved in this but that pizza gate is just a conspiracy theory then you're just you're part of the problem dude yeah anybody that denies pizza gate pisses me off so much yeah man. but the ones that they so they deny pizza gate but yet they say trump is part of this pedophile ring yeah you're an idiot <laughs> you are i mean do they go hand in hand this pizza gate thing is revolved around this maxwell mm -hmm. epstein bullshit it's yeah. all part of the whole situation with the amount of times that the clintons have gone to the private island and yet the fact that you know, Hillary Clinton's ordering pizza and hot dogs for Obama. Like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, those emails. Get out of here. If you look into those emails and read that shit, dude, that is 
dark, sketchy ass stuff. There's yeah, no yeah. way to spin that. Right. For Take any them all logic. Down. I don't yeah. even give a shit. <laughs> yeah, they're all fucking corrupted and sick bastards, yeah. man. Do some research, people. Think Take for yourselves. Yep. Don't do it on Google. <laughs> yeah, right. Duck, duck, go. <laughs> mark, mark. All right. Number five. If someone was going to make a movie about you, who would you want to play you, Mr. Man. Quadnets? So I had some girls that I was friends with back in college, and they all said that I was like, I was just like Zac Efron. So we'll go with Zac Efron. Zac Efron. Why am I I'm not? He's like the high school musical kid. Oh, yeah. Zac Efron. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I heard he had a, he was addicted to Coke for a long time. Nice. So yeah, yeah, he's got him, a wild man. side, man. Yeah. <laughs> right. So he would be the only one because I'm not really big into Hollywood. Um, I don't you could know. have said me, bro. I would have played you. Yeah, but you I'm famous. Look, you don't look like it, man. You're not famous. I don't have to play, man. I'll, I'll go in blackface. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's racist, man. <laughs> nah, man. I didn't mean yeah. it like that. So that is who I would choose because <laughs> I know no one else that could play me that would maybe look like me. Um, but I don't know a lot of people. In high school musical, was just so instrumental to my life <laughs> was it <laughs> <laughs> i've never seen it's uh what I've how old are you again it. um 31 oh you already old, in, i didn't realize you crossed the 30s yet Maybe. I'm, I'm um, an old fart not nah, man Don't i'm say a that 90s case. baby 90s baby like literally 90 so let me ask you real quick before i go to the last question did you grow up with anime and you're no i mean so you mean cartoons <laughs> Because anime was just cartoons. And then as an adult, I, re- I learned that anime is not a cartoon. And I'm like, but it's a cartoon. It's so like no. a Japanese, yeah. Korean dr- so uh, like genre So like the first of thing I was introduced to was Dragon Ball Z. But like we grew up way out in the country. We didn't have cable growing up. They didn't have satellite TV back then. So um, so Pokemon and all that stuff is all after you or that was your time no, you just like, weren't into it? I collected the cards, but mm. th- I didn't watch the show. And like, I don't think collecting the cards was anime. That was okay. just like a hobby, I guess. Okay. I'm fascinated with that stuff because... Um, what, anime? I, 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 can't, I hate anime with a passion, man. I don't mm. know why. It's always really bothered me for some weird reason. And kids seem to be so drawn to it. Even my own kids, except my youngest... Well, it's they, like a um, cartoon. I mean, I know, but they like choose it over American stuff and they're like, they get stuck in these little weird things with it. I feel like it's subliminal bullshit from other countries to brainwash our children. I said it. I addressed the elephant in the room. I am um, propagated by the Asians dude, I'm of not, China. I'm not, a, I'm not against it because I totally understand what you're saying, but I have some adult friends that, that watch it and they say that it's, it's good character development on a lower budget, right? So, in order to create something good these days, you have to have millions of dollars, actors that are out the ass, and they're probably very prima donna. They require issues be resolved. And to do an anime, it's just, okay, we have a couple of writers and a couple of artists, and we're going to create something that we can develop into a great show, or we want to develop this into something that's better than what any human can go and act on screen. So I get I get the aspect of that. You know, you want to make a Godzilla. That's a very half full way of looking at. It. Yeah. But the stuff I'm seeing is like I see a same, the same weird uh, attraction that these, I guess people that are in their early 20s right now is like the ones that I'm talking about the most. You're older than that bracket yeah, for sure. But they all have a, the same weird perversion, and they all have that same shit. And there's anime like pornography and stuff with it too, like aimed for that that generation too. Mm. And it, it, there's something, I don't know how to explain it. If anybody else out there listening has the same take on it or knows anything else about it that fits what I'm talking about, tell me, send it to me. Cause, uh, True the theory I at gmail.com. You were close. I, um, it's something I've always uh, wanted to dig into more, but I just, I don't know. I so like any... you're talking about just like the, the, is it like a series or is no, it just like, like the whole, the genre of it. Okay. It's. I feel like there's some subliminal stuff going on there to um, okay. kind of brainwash kids. I mean, that's everything these days. Yeah, right? for sure. So, question for you, Mister Willie: Have you you saw the What If series? What if? Yeah. Uh. Uh-uh. Dude, you you would love it, man. What if is like it's a Marvel series, but it's all animation. Um, I would say it's a cartoon over anime, but um, dude, it's awesome. I'd recommend. What's that it. on? I guess. Well, you said Marvel once. It's got to be Disney now. Yeah, so it's probably on like Disney Plus. Um, okay. I'm going to have to send you some stuff off-site. Uh, 
I made the wife watch it, and dude, she loved it too, man. It really? was like nothing is better than watching the Avengers die. Okay, <laughs> it is. It's good stuff. I highly recommend it. What do you mean the Avengers die? Exactly. So it's like just a bunch of what it's, if scenarios with it's Marvel characters. Yep. That sounds fun. It is. It is. It's fantastic. Um, they're not paying us for this. I personally enjoyed it because I like. We actually al- are sponsored by Disney stuff. now. This episode is brought to you by Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone with Disney is a pedo. TOT okay? podcast at the Disney Plus login screen for twenty percent off your fucking sellouts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see exactly. Um, no, we're oh not. Boy. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Oh yucks! Yeah. See. Um. Yeah. Enough of the Disney shit. Enough of Marvel. Enough of anime. Let's get to the last question, number six. What's the best advice you've been given? in life nice okay um i've been given a lot of advice some is inappropriate other is better um but the best thing that i've been told from day one is just to always be yourself be true to who you are um you may not always fit in but that's not always a bad thing um i know like in high school i didn't exactly fit in because i was myself and uh looking back now like i tell my parents i'm like thank you so much for not treating me the same way my friends are treated because um, I'm a better person because of it now. So always be true to yourself, even if you think you are a little weird or I'm not cool or as popular or I'm not in with the popular crowd. Um, That's a good thing. Okay. It's always good to be different. So be true to yourself. And whenever you, you become an adult, you grow up, it's uh, it's going to make you a better person. So that is my best advice. That's very beautiful. Thank you, Miss Colorado. Thanks. Next is a swimsuit. It, dude. Um, <laughs> I'll show it off, man. <laughs> you, you, you gave me a good idea when you, the way you first um, engaged in that question, you said is for inappropriate advice or however you said that. And I was like, oh, I want to make this a two part question. Oh, no. What's your most inappropriate advice? Yeah. Given? What's the best inappropriate advice you've been given? And what's the best just in general advice you've been given? So I'm going to add that maybe to our next show. Nice. Not this TOT podcast because it's already set in stone. <laughs> yeah. Don't be a dummy. Blow it on her tummy. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> yeah, you can, Thanks for listening. You can edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> I might put that on the bloopers reels or go. just leave it. Oh, we'll see. Nice. Only you time will tell. Look, look, we're standing like this. Boom. Back. We're going to wear each other's shirts. In the and next, welcome the back. Next, <laughs> the next yeah, I'm not wearing a shirt. and you're, you're wearing my the one I was wearing. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Hold it. Freeze. We're going to cut that part out. All right. All right, man. Do you want people following you on social media or you want any kind of plugs you'd like to? <laughs> no, <laughs> don't even look at me. Okay? Just slowly raise the, the mic to your mouth. Oh. No, dude. We stay off of it. We, um, I look from a distance. I don't. So if you want to follow David Quadnet, just come on TOT can, and find him on the library. He's been on a fi- few times. I'll be at the local park feeding the geese. <laughs> there you go. Look for me at your local I'll park. I'll be walking my dog. <laughs> just leave me alone, all right? <laughs> I yeah. respect that. Yeah. Um, all right. If you guys want to follow me, I'm a sellout. I sold out yeah. to Disney Plus and I sold out to Instagram. At Real E. Willie. I post some stuff about the show on here still, and I'm going to s- probably put some spoilers on the last few guests on there coming up real soon because 100 is right around the corner now. The next is 98, 99, 100. We'll be back. Yep. You coming back for 100th episode? I'll be back before then. It, you be, as long you, as you'll have me. Will you be back for the 98th episode? What is this? 96? 97. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll be back for 99. All right, man. I'm counting on it. And I'll probably be here for 99. Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah. But I'll probably ride it out. out on the 100. I'll stab you. Uh, I just hate the patriarch. <laughs> no, dude. The 100th episode is going to be fun. We're going to yeah, do trivia games, all kinds of dumb shit, drinking will Monica, games. Will Monica be there? Monica will 100% be there. Nice. I might bring my wife. That would be awesome. We have a weird thing with her. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, man. If you want to bring her on the next episode, we could do, I could get Monica on 98. And, uh, uh, maybe so. We'll no, no, no. We'll wait till the 100. Okay. Well, we'll do 100. Bother. Monica has Except- her hands full. We'll do a hundredth episode. Fun time. Monica will definitely be there. Brad will most likely be there. And a bunch of other cool people that you guys love and like to listen to will be there as well. Nice. Cool. All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. I appreciate Anytime. it. Anytime. Thanks for coming. I appreciate yep. you. Thanks for staying so late too. Cause it's past our bedtime and you have it to drive is, home. Man. Yeah. It's all good. All right, dude. You know what to do. Woke, woke pack. Ow, ow. That's what it is.